Manx Radio Podcasts, powered by Shaw. Well, hello and welcome to the brand new series of Countryside here on Manx Radio. I'm Simon Clark. And I'm Kiri Kermood. Well, it's been a few months uh, since Countryside's been on the air, but there's no real dramas to be uh, reporting in the agricultural world in particular, Kerry, is there? No, things have settled down a bit, getting ready for winter now. Um, The forage shortage has been still uh, prominent on everybody's lips and there is still a little bit of shortage around for for the winter bedding and hopefully back in September there when the weather did come right, people will have gathered a little bit more silage for their winter and it is nearly December now so, you know, it's a month under our belts. How worrying it all was, though, for a while with that dry spell, not just here, but around, of course, the whole of Great Britain. And uh, But how how the grass on the Isle of Man recovered was wonderful, wasn't it? Because they even got very, very late cuts of silage in, didn't they? They really did, and it was so bare in the summer. You know, the north of the island got an absolute hiding, didn't it, Simon? Mm. And you know, the south, it wasn't quite as bad. But, you know, farmers are resilient creatures, and uh, they will always bounce back. Yes. But the the new series of Countryside, uh, we've uh, hopefully got uh, some interesting topics for this first week. Um, I went along to the Moran ploughing match because uh, they're always fun, aren't they? Although there's a lot of people watching who have done it for many years and done lots of ploughing, and a lot of people taking part, and some new ones that have maybe not done it in their youth but enjoying doing it now, whether it be horses or or tractors. But uh, the seriousness in the, in the actual competition when they're taking part, isn't it? There is yeah. some serious, mm-hmm. serious competition in the plough and matches, but there's some really talented ploughmen on the and women on the island, both with the horses and the tractors. An absolute credit to them getting out there and some of those wild old winter days, uh, you know, battling the elements to make sure they've got the straightest line of plough in there. It is. And uh, the prime stock show's coming up. Yes, a really exciting time of year for uh, the Manx farmers. They can really showcase the best of the best beef and lamb and pig on this island. And it's a, a great event and urge everyone to get along to Knock Alo, even if you're not taking part with livestock, to go and enjoy the atmosphere and especially the young handlers. You don't have to have a beast or have the competency in the agricultural show rings, but come along and have a go. It's, everybody is welcome. All right, well, let's hear this week's countryside. Manx Radio's Countryside is brought to you by NFU Mutual. Well, Kerry, new series of Countryside. Uh, you're thick in the middle of the farming industry, of course, at uh, Orisdale and Ballasalla. And how has things been? It's been a bit wet and muggy of late. It's been absolutely brilliant this last couple of months, mm-hmm. Simon. The rain came just when uh, farmers could gather in the last of the silage, so that was uh, very much appreciated. And it's only really this last week or so that uh, we've had an influx of rain. It's sodden the ground, but the temperature's still mild. Yeah, it's nice and mild. And uh, what's incredible to me is the, the summertime in that real dry spell when it didn't rain for months, did it? And all the grass was burnt and there was a struggle but my word, how how it's recovered. It really has. The countryside looks really, really good at the minute. But the people that did struggle in that drought have really suffered. You know, they are still short of, of forage and whatever else. But um, hopefully this last spell of weather will have picked everybody's heads up and uh, made plans for the winter. And well, this month has really shortened that length of that winter period now. Yeah, and of course, uh, I've seen one or two lambs around the north of the Isle of Man with little coats on them. <laughs> My word, they're early, but you don't realise it's nearly December, isn't it? So, um, like I say, the time of year's on and the early lambs will be getting about, so uh, you must remain vigilant in the countryside when, when the sheep and lambs are about. But the general the general um, sheep farmers, I suppose, are not lambing till the spring, near enough? Yeah, a lot more people are lambing towards sort of March, April time, because the weather of late has been so terribly wet through the early parts of the winter so they've they've delayed it and delayed it with the good dry summer lambs have been good this year and got away well to the Isle of Man meat plant before we get into our first piece many congratulations Uh, you've been accepted and voted in uh, on I certainly have I'm absolutely delighted Simon to become a a youth development program committee member for the British Texel Sheep Society over in Stoneleigh in England it was a hotly contested election and yeah I came out on top thankfully but uh, when you're actively involved at home with the farm and a lot of support behind you you know it makes you focus and it drives you forward Yeah. what what does this mean what's your your role involved well the YDP as it's known the youth development program helps like-minded people in the 
British textile industry to um, progress at their home farms, keep the commercial traits. So you're producing lamb for for the local consumer. You're getting the right traits. You are you producing the best of livestock off what farm you have, and it's just to basically develop young people in their areas with knowledge transfer, lots of seminars and workshops, and it just develops personal skills. So you're, you're up and ready for your business uh, as you get older. And uh, how many are involved in this? The committees of five people from around the whole of Great Britain, so Scotland, England, Ireland and Wales, and I'm part of the north of England with being in the Isle of Man. We meet up on a regular basis so we can go from each area and have organised get-togethers with various veterinary surgeons and different people of, of great knowledge so they can bring the information to the young people and then we can filter it back through our areas with having little workshops and seminars at our own farms. But it's, it's having that confidence of young people getting together and actually passing the knowledge and some days when you think, oh, I'm having a really, really bad day. You know, everybody's in the same boat. You're not alone there. And it's, it's that sharing of information. Well, good luck with that. And congratulations on that appointment. Thank you. But uh, let's move on with our first item. Uh, of course, the Prime Stock Show uh, is coming up very shortly, Kerry. It is. It's only round the corner. It only feels like five minutes since the summer shows. But I caught up with Jim Cayley, the president of the Royal Manx Agricultural Society, to hear what's ahead. Jim, well, it's that time of year again, the Christmas Prime Stock Show just around the corner. But a recap on the summer. What a great summer show you had there out at Nokalo. Oh, yeah, absolutely, Kerry. Um, it seems a long time ago now and we, we had that early summer and there was no sign of any rain and now it's gone the opposite way, no sign of anything to dry. You know, you know we've had, I think, seven uh, wet days on the row and sort of nearly six inches of rain. So, uh, you know, any old Manx fellow would tell you, like, if you've got six inches, you're doing quite well. <laughs> you certainly are, Jim. And just now you've taken the entries for the, the Christmas Prime Stock Show. A good a haul as normal? Oh... Yeah, I think it's on a par with other years. It's um, it's stepped up really the the, the prime stock show um, in the last two or three years. It, we used to used to always be on a Thursday afternoon, and um, it, it we wasn't getting that well supported. Um, and when we moved two years ago uh, to the Monday night, it made a heck of a difference. The, the car park was full, and the the mart was full, and it was a really good atmosphere, and there was lots of entries in the prime stock section and and in the the young handlers and yeah it's the same again like it's the same format monday night and all the same uh classes and well a few extra classes as well yeah. so it's good it was really good how the, how you brought into the baby beef classes and the breeding cattle sections these two classes in particular the animals can go home again be kept on the farms and brought out again at the summer shows the introduction of these two classes has really made a difference the beef classes were lacking a little bit at the summer shows and it would probably have been a lot of work just to sort of try and break the animals just for the two shows. But with this, you can break them a bit younger and then, you know, it just helps. So it's a lot easier come showtime. So it's, it's a good idea. It's a, it is a really good idea. And like you said before, it gets younger people involved, which are the future of the shows as well. It's a great spectacle in that ring, Jim, when you're seeing a young eight, nine-year-old with a lovely little calf there, and then you see her again at the summer shows and winning too. Well, that's what it's all about, fetching, fetching the, getting the younger people interested and, uh, you know, the, the art of showing and all the things you, you learn on the way. And um, this year we're really good with the, with the with the judge we've got is a really good uh, showman and stockman himself and uh, Mr Willie Hamilton and he's good in that respect of in, uh, hopefully encouraging the younger ones on and um, you know hopefully pass some of us um, ring craft and, and know, know how on for, for the next generation. That's it it certainly does help gets passed down the line and the, in the cattle section in particular you have the native native cattle, the Aberdeen Angus and the Hereford types, and then there's the continental classes as well. How do they fare up in modern day farming nowadays? Because the natives are maybe a thing of the past? They are a thing of the past, but it's, it's, there is classes for everything. So, um, yeah, and there, and there is maybe markets for everything. There used to be these schemes for them, things as, uh, for the Aberdeen Angus and the, the native ones as well. And it's it's whatever you, you prefer. Like some people maybe prefer them and some people prefer the there may be the more modern continental beads that grow faster and you can turn them around and uh, get them to bigger weights a lot quicker. So there is something for everyone there. And how do you fare now with the weight bands? There was a, a limit on the on the heavy cattle, but uh, you've moved it. 
Yeah, it has gone up a little bit this year. I think it's gone up from 600 to 620. But yeah, it's a pity really there is an upper weight on it because you, you you don't really want to uh, be penalising anybody or trying to turn them away. There should there should be a class for for every every animal really, every beast. You know, if, if somebody spent the time to to get it there, it should there should be a class for it. And also the sheep section is uh, always a great competition and the three good classes again this year, Jim. Oh yeah, yeah. We've got the the hill lambs and then the um, the, the the pure um, continental, really good shaped lambs, and then uh, we've got the sort of crossbred classes, which is a bit of a combination of the 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 better sort of rams on the more hillier type crossbred use. Crossbred yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we've got them, and um, I suppose that class in particular, Jim, for the crossbreds. Everyday farmers can take part in that because these will be lambs that they'll be putting to the abattoir weekly, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Every week when you pull them, you always get some that's better than others that you think, oh, that's a good lamb. So, yeah, it's just a chance if you wanted, you could sort of do a bit of showing and just see how you go against anybody else. And the Prime Stock Show is a really special time of year. It's the Christmas one. You know, it's the, the quality produce this island is bringing out. And it's a great time for the farmers to get rewarded. You know, I've got good memories of the Christmas shows. Like, it used to be sort of slightly... Uh, later, it used to be first week in December, and it would it used to clash with the Smithfield show, which was a big thing at the time, and it was a job to get the two in. But yeah, it sort of carries it on from the. It's not just the show, but for the butchers too, like to to buy the the, the champion and to have it the the prestige of having the champion beef or champion lamb or champion pork, whatever it is in their in their shops around about Christmas. Yeah, and that is a real spectacle when you're down the high street seeing the silverware and the ribbons uh, flying there. It is really lovely. But these shows, Jim, they can't go ahead with, without the great support and help that you have. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, um, well, right right down from the exhibitors to the judges, to sponsors, you know, to everybody, to stewards, anybody that helps out. And then, you know, the, the, the Prime Stock Show on the Monday night, it's by kind permission of, the, of Central Mart, so... It, that they let us have their, their mark, which is ideal for the competitions. And then the Thursday night is um, obviously I look thanks to Isle of Man Meats for their uh, facilities and they, they help organise that or organise that. And touching on the Isle of Man Meats on the Thursday side of it, that's where we will see the pigs and, and the cattle and the, the sheep in the carcass form. And this is open for everyone to come and have a look at in, in the Isle of Man Meat plant. Yeah, we've, um, that's a slight change. It used to be the last two years it's been the Friday night but we've tried to move it to the Thursday because the young farmers are stock judging that night so trying to have everybody there at once just to save uh, people coming in dribs and drabs over two nights to get everybody in the one night. With the Christmas Prime Stock Show it's divided over the two days Jim on the Monday and the Thursday. How do you come about getting the overall champion? Right on the Monday there's two lots of cattle there's unhalted and uh, halted cattle so there's a champion in each section but the overall champion I think only comes from the halted cattle and then you've got champions too in your other classes the ones you can take home again and then you've got an overall sheep champion as well and an overall pig champion with, with all, all the pigs aren't at the because of uh, restrictions vetting and all the pigs that they, they don't uh, get shown and then on the Thursday night you have your overall cattle champion again and sheep and sheep and pig champions but there is a class two of combined I think it's bred by exhibitor where the judges on each occasion award points to them and um, you have an overall champion over the, the combined as well so there's, there's lots of classes and lots of things to to go for. And it's always nice for the farmers around the ringside at Nokalo to pick their champion and then they follow it through to the meat plant to see if their same choice comes out as champion that day. It, there's a lot of uh, hustle and bustle between the farmers thinking, have they got it right or, or have they not? It's, uh, it's great to see it, isn't it? Oh, yeah, everybody sort of has their one they fancy and sometimes you, you're talking to the next one and you think, oh, I think it'll be that one and somebody else will say it, the other one and as you follow them through to the carcasses, they don't always come out quite as you expected. They can be a little bit too fat or a little bit too thin. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not always clear-cut what's going to be the, the, the champion the, the second time round. But that's also quite good for the farmer to keep his eye in, just to know what Isle of Man meets and to grade it all the way through. It, it is. It, that, that, that's what you... you to, to see the finished product, see what it looks like. And, uh, yeah, just to see what the market wants or... The, the butchers or the, the, the judges at the, t at the time see what they're looking for. So it's, uh, yeah, it just helps us all just, like you say, keep our, uh, our hand in, our eye in, see what we're doing. So, Jim, just a quick recap on the, on the dates and time for the event so people can come along and enjoy themselves. 
Yeah, it's mo- Monday night at Upper Nakelo, County Commissioner Central Marts. Um, the sheep classes start at judging starts at six o'clock and the cattle judging at seven o'clock and there'll be uh, refreshments available all night long. That was Jim Cayley, the president of the Royal Manx Agricultural Show Society. And uh, well-respected fella, uh, Jim, isn't he? Uh, He is that, a very well-known beef farmer. And um, he's really taken the bull by the horns with with both shows. And the summer show was so successful. And I really hope Jim has a really good prime stock show too. Yes, and uh, let's uh, keep promoting uh, the the brilliance of the the Manx stock here on the Isle of Man because it gets underestimated sometimes, doesn't it, the quality that's there? It really does, and these farmers bring them cattle out time and again, and uh, it's fierce competition. Like you say, Simon, there's a lot of good quality stock on the island, so if you do want to go and have a look at that, that's on Monday the 26th at (laughs) 6pm. You're listening to Countryside here on Manx Radio with Kiri Kermode and myself, Simon Clark. Well, one thing for certain, the ground won't be too hard to get any ploughs in. And of course, it's a big thing here on the Isle of Man, the different ploughing societies having their shows, showing off their skills um, with various types of ploughs, horses, tractors, old and new. Uh, There's classes for everything. And I went along to the cool to the Moran Plowing Match to catch up with a few people taking part. Well, Stevie Lace, you've been at it a while on the plowing too, have you? Yeah, about 20 years now, yeah. Simon, yeah. Not that long, though, in the scheme of things, when you look at some of them that have been out and about. No, not really, no, but it, it, it's a good day out. It's good company. Yeah. You only make a mess. You do a good job. It's what it is, you know. Well, one thing is, you, you're plowing a field that's meant to be ploughed, aren't you? Oh, yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It all helps, I, yeah. <laughs> Well, 20 years, so fairly new to it, like I was saying, compared to a lot of the, yeah. the, the old hands at it. What, what got you into it? Um, look, look for something to do. Right. Mainly. You know, I've got a bit of a farming background as well. You know, yeah. I used to enjoy coming to matches, and I thought, well, give it a go. And I bought an old 65 to start with, and I bought a plough of Ronnie Kane, who was very successful in this time. So you know, I went along with that, then I went on the modern stuff. You know, the, the bad weather drove me into a cab. So there you go. The plough you got of Ronnie Kane then, a, a champion's plough. Was, champion's plough. Was it the plough that was the secret? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. No, you, you have good days and bad days. You know, every field's different, Simon. You know, you can set up for one field and you know, go the next time and it's just a mess. Is it? The same settings and same everything? Same settings, yeah, it just depends the ground, you know, and everything like, yeah. You know. Sun is out anyway. It's nice now, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. good luck, I'll let you crack on. Thanks, Simon. Well, Stevie Ennett, uh, you must be the youngest here in the ploughing competition this time, are you? Well, it looks that way today. <laughs> bit of a battle of, <laughs> bit of a battle of the young farmers going on here with Duggan alongside you, though. Yeah, got the, got the older Duggan here today. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> no, the younger one, younger one's gone away, so... So the old man's having a having a go today, but it's, uh, yeah, it's coming too. We're closing in on the finish now, so yeah, it's not this, this the trickiest bit. This is the this is the hardest bit, you know, trying to trying to get both sides straight and parallel, and hopefully come out with a good finish at the end of it. So yeah, so you've got a slightly different thing. You've got a bit more control on yours with the hydraulic top link and things. Uh, is that a big help? That's a massive help. Um, I've just Fitted. I got the play last year, um, purchased it from a guy across, um, so I, I had the top, hydraulic top link on it last year and then I've just added a, a few extras to it this year, it just makes it a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. you, still, you still have to plough though, I mean it's probably only a quicker way that you can alter that's way, where you want it. Yes, that's right. What sort of things can you alter, left, right and forward and back sort of thing? Can yeah, you? You, can, you can tilt it forward and back. Um, slew it you know left to right um, but it's still it's still a job even even with all that you know to get it right it's, it's still a still an art yeah. I've, I've been doing it for a few years now and I'm still every match you you know you you're still learning really yeah. every every field is different oh well we'll yeah. leave you to it anyway yeah, good luck great. thanks Simon Thank cheers well Billy Cleland is Good to see you out, and the sun is shining, which is That's rare. Right. Uh, yes. Yeah, you're, you're officiating today, are you? Yep, yep. Uh, Dennis Quirk and myself judging here. 
And what's the, the things you look out for as a judge of a ploughing competition? Straight, just straight, straightness is part of it. Yeah. Uh, goodbye and uniform to your furrows. That's and then of course you got what we're looking at here now is the clash. Uh, the finish or whatever you want to call it. The Manx people always called it the clash. Uh, and this is hard to do a clash as it is to do a bye, a good one. But still you get 20 points for everything you see, isn't it? Right. Uh, 20 points for the bye, 20 points for the clash, 20 points for general appearance. And uh, that's quite a bit. So but she's marked like a bit of a sheepdog trial sort of thing. <laughs> well, isn't? similar thing, yeah. isn't it? You've got to get a winner. That's what you've got to do. Yeah. And you've got to try and put the points where they are deserved. But it, uh, it it looks a nice field, this, although it's a nice day, but she seems a bit tricky for them, has it? Oh, uh, but, you know, I mean, if you're marking the field out, you try and cross the, the wheel marks, so everybody's got a chance, whereas when you're going with the wheel marks, it's very difficult. Is that uh, the wheel marks from, from when from it was combined? Combine. Yeah, 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 yeah. And combines is heavy now, they're making a big mark. I mean, you can see it, you can see it here. You got the wheel marks and and yeah. What the, what's the, the the worry with that? Does the plough follow the sort yeah, of wheel marks? Yeah. Well, I mean to say, you, you one for it maybe in the wheel mark, another for it out of the wheel mark, and you can't balance it up. But if you go and cross them, everybody's got the same chance. Like ah, you know. right. So that's Good. the that's the way I look at it anyway. But it's as nice to see as many competitors here. I think it's about 19 here today. I think that's great, because at one time uh, it was dying again, you know. It's, 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 there's no money in it. No. <laughs> there's no <laughs> money in it. <laughs> but uh, it's a good competition, and uh, I think it's great that there's so many in it. The old grey Fergie here, Aye, long, long. You, you'd right. think she'd have stalled by now the, and, the and speech I mean, is wrong. The, the Ferguson plough as well. Yeah. They got a class for that here, Ferguson class. So he's going to win that, no problem. Nobody else got a full unit. Track uh, and plough, you see. I remember ploughing with one of them two footer Fergie ploughs myself. That's right. They were the thing, 1947 48. Oh, it was newer than that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's when the Ferguson came out, really. The, you know, the petrol. You see, there's one here. There's one up there, a parrot and Ferguson. I think that's a long time since they've been about. Yeah, yeah, well, my dad had two of them. We used to Did drive he? them. That's right. Yeah, switch it from the petrol to the paraffin. But yeah. to see the, the horses involved in it as well, I mean, when you see them, the horse fellas pound with one, that single furrow. That's right. You think, oh, gosh, how things have moved on. Well, even even to the two furrow and the tractor and then to the modern ones. They that's got right, now. they go about. But they said in the old, well, when the horse ploughman was ploughing with a single for a plough, plough an acre a day, and he'd walk 10 miles. Aye. That's what they used to reckon, an acre a day. Now these fellas that plough now do three or four acres an hour. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just That's a the difference, thing, isn't it? it? Yeah. Just a difference. And it, but it's not like walking on a marathon or anything, no, is it? It's no, no. weird sort That's of way you right. had to walk. But then they had, you know, I never ploughed with horses all my life, like, I mean, I mean, I left school straight into a tractor, like, you see, but I've, I've always enjoyed ploughing, and I enjoy, I don't mind judging, as long as you've got a decent fellow to judge with. Yeah. And yeah. you couldn't get a worse fellow than Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> Do you sit together and discuss it then at the end? Oh, uh, you got to, yeah. you got to. Uh, yeah. And you, you judging this one and the modern ones? No. As, no. Just this, ah, uh, well, the world style is up there, so, that's a different set of judges. But there's been a good competition here. Yeah. No two ways about it. There's been some good ploughing. Oh, considering. yes. Oh, considering the ground, yes. Tip top. Tip top. Nice shoes. Spectators. Yes. Yeah. Bite to eat. Everyone looks happy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> David Collett, uh, your chairman, I think, of the Moran Ploughing Society now. Yes. Uh, we're taking over from the old guard. <laughs> They're retiring or tired one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, you must be pleased today with the turnout. Yes, we're better turnout than we, uh, we've we had for a couple of years now, I think. And uh, 
we've ended up with a decent day with the weather we've had over the past week or two. Well, what's uh, been the resurgence reason? Just people getting a bit more time? I don't know. Uh, I think nearly everybody that does the match has turned up today, so um, whether they're wanting to get the... This is the last one before the new year now. It'll be January before the next one. So get out and play with your toys while mm. the sun's shining. How many competitions do they get in in a year, roughly? Um, I think about 10 or something like that, yeah. 10, 11. Um, a... We're spread out all over the island. Uh, we go from one end to the other. That suits everyone then, yes. though, doesn't it? But there's a mighty variety of machinery yes. here, isn't there? Well, just on this row here, we've got a drag plow with an old Thordson, and then Chris Clegg with a grey Fergie, and then Billy Commode with a John Deere, uh, and Bonford outfit playing Manx style, and then I was alongside playing Manx style. Um, we had two pair of horses up until uh, one of David and Nicholas went a bit lame, so. Oh. And then we've got the selection of vintage, and I think there's only one classic tractor. And then over in the other field, we had the Wilfara. We could give them a bit longer butts there, seeing they've got bigger ploughs. Ah, a bit deeper too, yeah, yeah. yeah. But is there a different depths from this side to the other? I think it's six inches on the on well, the world, is it? Uh, world's usually a bit deeper. Yeah. Um, the vintage and mang style knobs about six inches. But the wider you plough, the deeper you want to go to get the full furrow. And they'd be ploughing probably 13 inches wide, whereas we're only doing 10 inch right. furrows. But they all seem to have enjoyed it today. Well, Just got to wait for the results now. Yes. Yeah. When are the results out? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> but we got a presentation next Thursday, uh, the 22nd at Peel Golf Club. And we'll be doing a bit of a, a film show. I've got some old uh, videos put onto DVDs of uh, Manx plough matches, so we'll be showing them. That'd be an interesting night uh, then. They've got the uh, big screen and the one of these roll down mm. screens, so everybody will be able to see it. And uh, there'll be a few thinking, God, I'm never that young, was I? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, congratulations and yeah. good luck with the uh, yeah. plan competitions in the coming year. Yeah, and uh, yeah. it should be a good night at Peel. Yes, yeah, should be. Well, there we are, some of the people uh, involved in the Moran Plowing match. And you get some mighty characters there, isn't it? All stand and study, and it's only an excuse to gossip for half of them. But of course, <laughs> there's such concentration on the people that are actually plowing, isn't it? Because the slightest take your eye off the ball. And that's it. Yeah. A very big wonky line. But no, it is an old skill that um, needs to be passed on to some of the younger generations. You see some contractors now, they'll turn up with a great big tractor and a huge big plough mm -hmm. and you swear they're digging for Australia. But uh, those old boys there, they've really got it off to a tee. And so, so much success going away competing in the UK and further afield some of them they are and uh, done the Isle of Man proud in the past so it uh, it was great to, to get round and, and have a chat with them all there well there we are uh, countryside the first in the new series dusted and done as they say back to front but if you've got anything for countryside let Kerry Kermode or myself Simon Clark know leave a message here at Manx Radio or you can send an email to countryside at manxradio.com if you want uh, to feature something on the programme or if you've got anything of interest, uh, just put it to us and we'll try and get round and cover whatever we can. Uh, as long as it's uh, involving the Isle of Man and countryside somewhere along the way, uh, we'll try and squeeze it in for you. But uh, good to hear from Jim Cayley there and, of course, <laughs> the people enjoying the Moran Plough match as well. But we'll leave it there for this week's Countryside. We're back next week with more. So from me, Simon Clark. And me, Kiri Kermode. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Don't sit in the slow lane. Join the fast lane right now with Shaw's all-new Superfast Plus Broadband. Enjoy more bandwidth, amazing speeds and the best value on the island from just £23.95 per month. So don't be left behind. Get a piece of the high-speed action with Superfast Plus Broadband from Shaw. For details, visit our stores in Douglas, Ramsey and Port Erin or click shaw.com. Love being Shaw. Terms and conditions apply.